so much. <laughs> Here we go for Sydney Stevens. Yeah. All right, guys, we've come to that magical point in the evening where we now have our featured comedian, who also happens to be our last comedian on the list for this evening. Like we said earlier at the top of the show, we like to give every, uh, a comedian every every week the chance to stretch their legs a little bit, do a little bit longer set, get a little bit more promotion behind them. So, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage. He runs a monthly showcase in Mason City. He came in second in the Funniest Person in Iowa contest, which I can get the winner. Sorry. <laughs> Guys, make some noise with the very funny Dylan B. So I have hair, and it's not on purpose. Uh, I used to trim it short. I used to let it just be low, low cut. And my girlfriend told me two years ago that I was going bald. And so I thought, I should grow it out once. And that's what this is. So basically, I'm treating my hair like when your grandma goes into hospice. <laughs> I never really gave a shit about it for most of my life, but now that I know I'm about to lose it, I'm taking extra special care of it. <laughs> that being said, I did recently lose my grandmother. She passed away. It was sad. I loved her a lot. She was a great lady. She was always full of surprises. She always surprised us. Her last one was kind of a bummer. <laughs> Oops, all tumors. <laughs> but she died, and she had one last good surprise left for us, so because when she passed away, uh, she had been a piano teacher for her entire life. And uh, when she died, she left all of her pianos to the church that she had worked for, the Methodist Church in Osage, Iowa. She left all her pianos to them. And that was a huge surprise for my entire family because the last time we checked, she wasn't listed as an organ donor. <laughs> no, but she's still alive. She told me I could lie about her dying. Because uh, <laughs> it would be funny, and she comes to all my shows, except this one. <laughs> she said she would be here. She's, she's great. She's just unreliable sometimes. But <laughs> she always gives me really good advice, though. Uh, when I was uh, 15 and I, I got my permit, and I drove over to her house in, in my first car, she was like, hey, be careful on your drive home. Most accidents happen close to home. And I was like, whatever, Grandma. And then uh, two weeks ago, I shit my pants in my driveway. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Duh. I just misunderstood. She's smart as shit. I'm just dumb. But I am losing my hair and uh, other things are happening because I'm 31 now. My body's changing and my girlfriend of three years, she's got me taking vitamins. <laughs> and I've been taking vitamins for two months and now my piss smells like oatmeal and looks like Mountain Dew. <laughs> and my grandpa had a stroke, and I'm just wondering, like, how complex is that B vitamin, you know? <laughs> Anybody take a B complex here? No? Well, that's what's gonna happen to you if you do. Your grandpa's gonna have a stroke. <laughs> if, uh, if, if the government suddenly made asparagus legal, you would never pass that piss test. <laughs> yep. You'd walk in, you'd pee in that cup, and you'd be like, I don't even need to send this to the lab. I know you're dirty. <laughs> but we're in Minnesota now where uh, weed is legal. Woo. That's crazy, dude. Ish. ish? Why ish? Can you still get arrested for weed here? Is that possible? <laughs> they can't sell till 2025. Oh, but you can have it though, right? I don't even know about that. Yes. <laughs> wow, somebody needs to fucking read up on the laws. <laughs> what the fuck, man? 
thought I was talking to a group of informed, educated people. There's just a bunch of confused folks going, we don't really know. <laughs> what if I get pulled over? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> okay. Well, in Iowa, it's certainly a crime. <laughs> it, it's most definitely a crime. And uh, I was wanting to quit drinking, and I was like, maybe I'll smoke weed instead to alleviate my anxiety. Because that's why I drink, because I'm anxious all the time. And I was like, maybe I'll smoke weed instead. And that turned out to be a bad idea, because I smoked <laughs> weed, and then I was just way more anxious. <laughs> And I was telling my buddy about it, I was like, dude, when I smoke weed, I get really anxious. And he's like, that's fair, man. Last time I smoked weed, I thought the cops were going to come. And I was like, that's cute, man. Last time I smoked weed, I thought I was the cops. <laughs> I was just sitting on my couch stoned, and then I exited my body, because I was too stoned, because I don't smoke that often. And I looked down at myself, and I was like, you're so fucking busted, buddy. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to have to take you in. I don't think I can let it slide this time. And I was like, oh, shit. So, yeah, I'm going to have to take you down to the station. And then I realized it was like the end of my shift and it was going to be a lot of paperwork. <laughs> so I was like, I'll let it slide this time. But can you imagine if I did take myself in? Just walked into the Mason City Police Station like, I got one! <laughs> and the lady behind the desk is like, what do you mean? <laughs> this guy was smoking weed. She's like, you're the guy. <laughs> That'd be weird as shit. But I'm 37 minutes away from Minnesota in Mason City, Iowa. So I was wondering the other day, like, if I was smoking weed in Mason City and the cops caught me, and I just hopped in my Honda Fit real quick and just drove 37 miles north and got across the line. If they would like hit a barrier while they were chasing me, they'd be like, oh shit, we got me. I'd be like, mmm, mmm, good, mmm, fine. Doesn't hurt anybody, right? But that's not how it would go. They would just grab me and pull me back over and be like, you're fucking going to jail, buddy. And it's fucked up too because like, Iowa could legalize weed. We could. We could. But we've got uh, Kim Reynolds running our state. And she's determined for uh, Iowa not to have a cool nickname. <laughs> we could be like, Iowa, you know? <laughs> but based on her criminal record, she's like, no, we're going to be OW Iowa. <laughs> and that's kind of fucked up. That pisses me off. I got an OWI back in 2017. I blew a .259, <laughs> which is three times the legal limit, or dead for some women. <laughs> and I didn't, get, I didn't get pulled over because I was going too fast, or I was swerving. Well, I did get pulled over because I was going too fast. I was going 28 and a 25, which I thought was bullshit even at the time, and, and they pulled me over, and they took me out of my car, and the adrenaline kicked in, and I came to. I was blacked out. I came to, and I was like, oh, fuck. They're like, we're going to have you do a field sobriety test. I was pulled over a block away from my house by a park, and I said, hey, can the field sobriety test be, if I can walk from my car to my house, you let me go? And they said, give us a second. <laughs> And they broke away, they huddled up, and they talked, and they came back and they said, uh, yeah, we can't do that for you this time. <laughs> and so I said, does that mean next time you got me? Like, can I do this again without jail? And uh, I ended up in jail, and it was fucked up because I didn't remember going to jail. I woke up in jail, and I was very confused. I was like, I don't have bunk beds. <laughs> I woke up in jail on the top bunk. It was 7 a.m. and they were like, you gotta see the judge. And I was like, what's that even mean, dude? Where am I? They like, just come with us. And then I looked down, oh shit, these aren't my pants. <laughs> they gave me some. And I went in to see the judge and the pants they had given me didn't fit. They were just too wide in the waist. 
And my hands are behind my back in cuffs seeing the judge, because I think, I don't know, maybe they think somebody's going to attack a judge someday. Who would do that when you're already in jail? That's ridiculous. But they had my hands behind my back and my pants that didn't fit. And that's a recipe for a disaster. <laughs> and the judge was telling me, he's like, you blew a .259. You were probably pretty sloshed last night. And I was like, yep. He's like, you're probably still drunk right now. And I'm like, yep, my pants are falling down. <laughs> and then I looked to the guy, the cop, it was a sheriff next to me. I said, my pants are falling down, like how I just said. And uh, he said, listen to the judge. And I said, fine. And then my pants fell down and my dick came out in front of the judge. And I just looked down and I looked at him and I said, see? <laughs> and then I paid SR-22 for two years and now it's fine. That's how that, that story ends. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. That's going to be a good time. Uh, my family still lets me come to Thanksgiving, but uh, there was one year that I wasn't invited. It was 2021. I was not invited to my family Thanksgiving. Uh, and that was because of 2020's Thanksgiving, where I showed up to my mom's house, and my mom said, hey, we should uh, drink like I drank in high school. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it, because I love drinking. And she was like, let's drink Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> I was like, cool, dude. I've never drank that before. Let's do it. I just want you to know firsthand, it tastes like shit, but it does the job. So we got two bottles of the orange juice flavored one, and then two of the red Mad Dog 2020s. And I drank the two orange juice flavored ones, and then I reminded my mother of my father because I left my entire family at Thanksgiving and made her cry. <laughs> so what happened was, I, <laughs> what happened was, I drank the two orange bottles of Mad Dog 2020, got some heartburn, thought I was gonna go out and have a cigarette. I did, I had a cigarette, and then I thought, man, it would sure be good to be at the bars in Mason City right now, my family lives in Osage. So I left without saying goodbye on Thanksgiving Eve, Drove back to Mason City and continued to drink at the bars, and my mom called me and I ignored all her calls. And, uh, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that whole story. I like fucking hanging out on the internet. Anybody else here hang out on the internet? Yeah, I love Reddit. Reddit's my favorite spot. Um, and I was on Reddit the other day, and, and somebody, I was in a thread and I was commenting, uh, which, you know, it's a weird thing to do, but I was, I was engaging in some conversations, and somebody was like, is America really as divided as they say it is on the TV? And at first I thought, no, because like, I can go outside and talk to my Trump neighbors, and like, we talk, it's fine. But then I realized like, all my left-leaning left friends, they love shit like uh, charcuterie, you know? <laughs> And all my right-leaning acquaintances, they love shit like, you know, school shootery. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, maybe it is that divided, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody here in the dating pool right now? Anybody here trying to date somebody? <laughs> Thinking about it? Yeah. You guys heard of red flags? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of red flags you can have when you're looking at somebody if you're like, oh, do I want to date them? There's a lot of red flags, but the biggest one is if they have the Confederate flag tattooed on their left or right arm. <laughs> Those are the kind of dudes that are like, I only like two things, domestic beers and domestic abuse, and baby, I'm all out of Budweiser. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that. I'll finish with this. Uh, I started comedy back in 2017. I had the worst year of my life. I got an OWI, I got an STD. <laughs> that's two acronyms you don't want if you're chalking up your score for the year that's a negative so what happened was on January 15th of 2017 I was laying in bed with my girlfriend at the time she was a therapist that thought she could fix me oops and I got a phone call uh, from my grandma and she was like yeah your grandpa died uh, in the driveway what the fuck, man? And uh, I was like, well, I gotta go to Osage. I told my girlfriend, I gotta go to Osage because my grandpa's dead. So I drove to Osage, and uh, yep, he sure was dead. 
uh, not in the driveway anymore. He was at the hospital, fortunately. Um, and uh, I showed up, and uh, as soon as I found out that he was actually dead, I called my current girlfriend at the time, the therapist, and I said, hey, I uh, cheated on you last week, <laughs> which I hadn't. But basically, it was just that uh, something bad happened to me, and I needed nobody in my life to be close to me anymore, so I made her go away. <laughs> and uh, that's really fucked up, but that's, you know, that's borderline, baby. And uh, <laughs> so she was gone, and uh, now I just had to worry about my grandpa's funeral. So we had the official funeral where uh, we went to the church, and uh, some dude that didn't know him said stuff that didn't make any sense about him. And then we had the Iowa funeral where me and my uncles and my mom and my grandma all got together in my grandma's garage and we drank a bunch of bush light and shared our favorite memories about him. His name was Rob. And in the process of this, uh, Rob owned a screen printing business. So his garage was his workshop. It was a mess. There was a lot of stuff. So my, me and my uncles, we thought we should clean this up a little bit to help my grandma because she's got a lot of things going on right now. And we started cleaning up boxes, and we found a box that was like about waist high and uh, covered in dust on the sides, but on top you could see it had been opened. And I was like, what's in that box? So I opened it, and it was full of porn. <laughs> and uh, the oldest porn was from like 1978. It had like pink confetti on the cover. It looked like a Saved by the Bell title card, except in the middle of it there was a woman with a huge bush. And uh, you just can't get a bush like that these days. But... Uh, the most recent porn in the box was a DVD, and it was unopened, and that made me super sad. Because <laughs> you know he was like walking out that morning to shovel, it was the middle of the winter, he was walking out to shovel, he's like, I'm going to shovel this snow, I'm going to move all this snow, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to have a nice stroke. <laughs> and then he had the opposite kind of stroke, out in the driveway and died with his boots on him. And my grandma leans in and she's like, you boys feel free to take any of that home with you that you want. And I was like, Grandma, the last thing I want to think about with my hand on my dick is your dead husband. <laughs> but then I thought about it, you know, like when people die or get sick out of the blue, they sort of have like, you know, they have a benefit. You know, they, have, they, they, they raise funds to, you know, Make sure that those people are taken care of, and they call it like they like walk around the high school track like eight times, and every 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 lap is a donation. They call it like hold hands for Hannah. I was like, fuck it, Rob deserves that. So I took that unopened porno, I took it home with me. Once every few months, I pop it into my uh, DVD player and I rub one out for Robert. That's the end of my time, guys. Thank you so much. Coming to the open mic here at Goonies that we do every week and is always free. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Well, there you go. Tell your friends because we're going to do this next week. We like it when there are people here. If you guys want to come back, there's going to be a fresh list. It's always a new rotation of comics. Uh, next week's featured comedian will be Lindsay Hensel. Um, let's see what else. Uh, drive safe. Have a good night, everybody.
will be 